All right, here's the review of the Park Zone Sequoi. Uh, it comes in a BNF version and a BNF version only, no RTF. So basically, what you get is the plane, a battery, and the charger. And the plane, it's relatively small. You can see I've got a ruler right here to show about the size of it. And uh, they recommend using a DX6i or, or DX5e or up transmitter. And the reason being is that when you have this plane with no dual rates or exponential, it gets really squirrely and goes all over the place. If you have a little bit too much control, especially on your first flights. And uh, the battery that comes with it is a 3.7 volt, 110 milliamp hour lipo battery. Really small, let's see here, about inch and a half in size. And I've also got a 130 milliamp hour one cell lipo from Common Sense RC that's a 15C so it's a little bit more powerful and uh, I also use these uh, Park Zone Micro Cessna batteries they're one cell and 70 milliamp hour and they don't last near as long and uh, much less power, uh, powerless and on the charger what I've done is I've made it in made it to where I can plug in a plug it into a wall so I don't have to keep replacing batteries and I'll try and get a video on that later on how I did that uh, it's, it's kind of annoying having to change batteries all the time so I'll try and get a video on that soon and this is just to show relative size of the Sequoia to the Vapor so it's about the same size as the Vapor smaller control surfaces but more maneuverable smaller wing all things that make it faster and just a little bit bigger prop and a much bigger motor and battery and it weighs almost twice as much it's a four channel plane uh, it's very aerobatic uh, let's see you can use it with the LP5 DSM the Blade CX2 transmitter but it's really not recommended like I said earlier it makes it more squarely because you don't have dual rates Let's see dual rates here and here don't have anything just these and dual rates are in here but for some reason they don't work so uh, I guess now I'll give you a flight video over right after we show you the insides there's the motor down in there and the gear and you can see I've hot glued it in place because it's getting uh, a little wiggly so I kind of opened it up and put more hot glue in there and there's the AR6400 receiver there is your rudder servo right there really really tiny stuff in this really tiny uh, here's your elevator servo and your little aileron servo back here with a bell crank that controls each aileron with only one servo and I've got some weight back here in the back because they come a little bit nose heavy. So now you guys can see it fly. Oh, oh, oh. Whoops. I crash often with this plane, so a little harder than most. Not definitely not for the beginners. Oh. 
Alright, I'm going to take you through the binding process here on the Sequoia. Uh, what you do, I'm using the DX6i now, and for the DX6i, what you do uh, to bind is using the Sequoia, you plug in the battery, making sure that the transmitter's off, so the battery's plugged in. And you can see, in just a second, it's flashing inside. So when it starts flashing, take your transmitter, the DX6i, hold the trainer switch, and power it on. Then you'll see the light on the inside. Go to solid. That means that you're bound. So now your transmitter works. Here's a quick update on my brushless upgraded Super Cub. Uh, I got a new wing for it. This time I kept the dihedral in it so it'd be a little bit more stable. And I also made the ailerons bigger. They're wider, and but they're not quite as long, but they end up having more area. I also added flaps. There's two flaps, so I've got separate ailerons and flaps so I don't have to do flap runs so this gives me a little more control and they're uh, relatively large so I can land and take off very slowly uh, so I've got a mess of wires to plug into the receiver on the bottom of the wing um, I'm still using the 480 brushless and the 30 amp ESC and uh, I've got S75 uh, E-Flight S75 servos on the flaps and S65s on the ailerons, elevator, and rudder. Uh, it needs bigger wheels. It looks a little funny with these tiny wheels. And I guess that's about it for the Super Cub, so move on to the Slow-V and what I've done to it. I've added a 400 size brushed motor uh, from a, a Slow Stick, and I've put a heat sink, sink on it because I'm running a 3 cell. Uh, it's much more aerobatic, a lot faster. It goes vertical, or it doesn't go vertical, it hovers. The wing's in really bad shape, and overall the plane's just in bad shape, but it flies very well for its condition. I'm still using the 11 by 4.7 prop, prop, which is also the prop that I've got on the Super Cub. So I guess that's about it for these planes. That's pretty much the Park Zone Sequoia. I'll try and get some uh, more aerobatic video. Uh, the batteries weren't fully charged when I flew it this time. I was running out of time because it's getting dark. But anyway, I'll try and get a more aerobatic video of me doing some aerobatics. Uh, more loops and rolls and inverted flight and Amelmans and split S's and all that kind of stuff. I'll try and get some of that. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe.